18th and early 19th century Britain was a place of upheaval. The Industrial Revolution meant that new machines replaced rural workers who moved to cities to find work. This and the return of soldiers from the wars with France and America led to overcrowding, lack of employment, poverty and a rise in crime. Children sometimes became orphaned and homeless, living on the streets and begging for food. Some had no choice but to resort to stealing by picking pockets or robbing shops and houses. How do you think the authorities responded to this? They imposed harsh penalties for even minor crimes like theft. And being a child did not protect you from the harsh punishments. In fact, children as young as seven were treated the same as adults in the courts. They were thrown in jail, transported beyond the seas, or worse still, hanged. The jails in Britain were becoming so overcrowded that the government used ships as floating prisons called hulks on the River Thames in London and in Portsmouth Harbour. The hulks also became overcrowded with terrible living conditions. Many of the prisoners were transported to North America. However, after the War of Independence ended in 1782, Britain had to find a new place to send its extra prisoners. So Britain began sending its prisoners to Botany Bay and in January 1788, the first fleet of 11 ships arrived in Sydney Cove, carrying convicts, marines, sailors, food and equipment. One of the first boys to be sent to the new colony was John Hudson, an orphan. He was only eight years old when he broke into a house in London and he stole a linen shirt, five silk stockings, a pistol and two aprons. John sometimes worked as a chimney sweep now, unfortunately for him, he left sooty footprints in the house that he broke into, which gave away his identity. Now, because he was so young, the judge was actually lenient on him, and he was very lucky to escape the death sentence. Instead, he was sentenced to seven years transportation to New South Wales. In 1788, the first fleet carried just a few child convicts who were mainly convicted for theft but thousands more child convicts were sent on the ships that left for New South Wales over the next 60 years. Child convicts on the transport ships suffered the same terrible conditions as the adults. They had to wear leg irons and they were held below decks where it was foul smelling and gloomy. Most were being transported for a sentence of seven or 14 years, but since they were unlikely to ever return, it was more like a life sentence. Can you imagine what it must have been like for one of those convicts, separated from family and friends and sent to far-flung places on the other side of the world? The youngest girl on the first fleet was Elizabeth Haywood, who at age 13 was convicted of stealing a linen gown and a silk bonnet. She was transported on the Lady Penryn, which was only designed to hold 70 people, but actually carried over 100 female convicts. After arriving in Sydney Cove, she was assigned to work as a servant for Mary Johnson, the wife of Reverend Richard Johnson. But in 1789, she was rude to her master and was punished with a flogging of 30 lashes. 